the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to our video service on the seventh Sunday of Easter. Today we welcome Pastor Karin Achtelstetter, who will preach. She is a member of our St. George's Lutheran Church, but also the Executive Director of Canadian Lutheran World Relief. We also thank Constantine for accompanying the hymns and for his solo at the end of the service. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Pentecost and will record one bilingual service. We ask for God's blessings for this service and for each and every one of you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. A prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, 
according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the first reading. The Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verses 5 to 15. Jesus says, Now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can ever now hear. But when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Holy Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm very excited to worship with you today and I would like to express my gratitude to Pastor Katharina who invited me to share God's word with you on this Sunday. It's the last Sunday before Pentecost. In May last year when I worshiped with you, I told you about my walks in my neighborhood and I'm still walking, if possible every day. And by now you would think I should actually know my neighborhood. But this week I discovered a new message on a stone. It was tucked under a garden fence and it read, be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. I stopped for a while and thought, what a beautiful message, what a beautiful image. Only recently my neighbor had told me how she was struggling to manage home office work and homeschooling when schools are closed. And she told me, every time when we go into a new lockdown, it feels like entering a cloud. It is a grey cloud, a heavy cloud, a cloud of loneliness, sadness, exhaustion, fear and grief. Our boss gospel reading today describes such a cloud experience. The disciples in fear and filled with grief are indifferent to Jesus' announcement that he will soon be going away. Since Easter and more than four chapters long, the Gospel of John tells us how Jesus is preparing his disciples and his followers for his departure from this earth. John the Evangelist first tells us about the emotional devastation that Jesus' disciples and followers felt. First, when Jesus was sentenced to be crucified, and later when they found an empty tomb. With the disciples, we experience the drama of the Holy Week with its almost unexpected happy ending. The risen Jesus finally appears in front of his disciples and followers. His disciples are relieved. 
They are overjoyed that their master is back. But this period of direct encounter and exchange with the risen Jesus, this period will soon come to an end. In the Gospel of John, we can see and hear how Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. Not just in today's Gospel reading, but also in the previous chapters, John the Evangelist describes in powerful and vivid ways the emotional roller coaster Jesus' followers experienced, the ups and downs of emotions, grief and joy, despair and relief, fear and hope, letting go and holding tight. With all these uncertainties, these ups and downs, these roller coasters of emotions, it isn't at all surprising that the disciples feel emotionally and physically drained and exhausted. No wonder that they hardly show any emotions when Jesus one more time bids farewell. But now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I've said these things. When we enter a dark cloud of grief, fear and exertion, when everything seems to be heavy and difficult, we sometimes feel almost paralyzed, unable to show our emotions and feelings. I imagine that Jesus' disciples and followers must have gone through similar emotions. We enter gray clouds of despair and grief. We enter clouds of exhaustion. And then the fear-filled question, what's going to happen with us? What holds the future? What will happen to me? What I find remarkable is that Jesus is not scolding or chastising his disciples. It is okay. It is okay that they don't want to know more, that they are so tired of asking more questions, that they don't ask anymore, where are you going? Jesus accepts them how they are in their sorrow. He accepts them in their stubborn grief. Jesus is there for them. He understands the fear of letting go. He understands the fear of change. In an amazing way, Martin Luther summarized Jesus' message to his disciples. Therefore, says he, you have good reason not to be terrified and cast down because I'm going away from you bodily, for thereby I will give you something better than you have had while you were with me, and you shall accomplish much greater and more glorious things than can now be done. Namely, the Holy Spirit shall effect through you far more gloriously and mightily what pertains to my kingdom than you now think. He shall also give you such comfort and courage that you shall no longer be filled with terror and deadly fear. This is how Martin Luther, almost 500 years ago, interpreted this passage. Jesus promises, I will give you something better. Jesus offers comfort and care and love to those who are grieving, to those who are cast down and those who are struggling. They are struggling with the future and with change. Jesus makes a promise that gray clouds will disappear. I will give you something better. You shall accomplish much greater and more glorious things than can now be done. Jesus promises all embracing joy and comfort grounded in faith. 
Jesus is giving and is giving comfort. Jesus is going away. He tells his followers that his physical absence is better for them, for us, than his physical presence. He will no longer be bound to one location only. The love of God which his disciples and followers have been witnessing and experiencing in Jesus' actions and their encounters with him will now reach out to everyone. Jesus proclaims the arrival of the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Like a rainbow of hope that stretches from heaven to earth, the Holy Spirit will cast away the gray clouds, will cast away grief and fear. The clouds of sorrow and exhaustion that are hanging over the disciples and are hanging over us, these clouds will be lifted. In today's first scripture reading, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21, St. Paul describes the force of the Holy Spirit, of the Advocate. The Holy Spirit gives us the inner strength and energy to surpass ourselves. With Christ dwelling in our hearts and being deeply rooted like a tree in the soil of God's love, we are enabled to grow beyond ourselves, to reach out wide and long and high and deep. We are enabled to become a safe haven and a strong anchorage for others, for our neighbors. And like a tree with its branches, we can become a safe space for one another. We can grow so high and so wide that we can reach our neighbors and share with them God's love. We all can become rainbows in our congregations, in our neighborhood, in our community, in the whole wide world. Be a rainbow in someone else's cloud is a message that one of my neighbors put out in his garden now that we are in the second year of COVID restrictions. You, the congregation of St. George's Lutheran, you are such a rainbow of hope and love. Together with your pastor Katarina and with your church council, you have become a sharing community despite COVID restrictions. You are sharing time, sharing laughter, sharing tears a phone call, a note. How are you? In your love and care for one another, you have become a rainbow, surpassing barriers and borders. And you reached out, not just in your community, but you reached out to another continent, to people who once were strangers. Together with Canadian Lutheran World Relief, the organization I represent, you are sponsoring and welcoming a refugee family, a family once threatened by deportation, will hopefully soon get a new start in Canada. As a member of St. George Lutherans, I want to share with you how grateful I am for your support. St. George's Lutheran has become a rainbow of hope for this refugee family. Much has changed since the life and times of Jesus on earth. But one thing definitely has not changed at all. The community of Christians is a community of sharing. Sharing not just of material goods and resources, but of all that what we possess. Gifts and talents, our time, our compassion, our readiness to reach out, our willingness to listen, to comfort. We become rainbows of hope and love. We are now in the second year of COVID and many of us, like my neighbor, experience 
fatigue, exhaustion, fear, and emotional roller coasters. Today's Bible readings and Jesus' promise to his disciple and to all of us remind us of the power of the gift of sharing. The experience of being accepted and loved, no matter whether we are exhausted and downbeat or hopeful and upbeat, the experience of the love of Christ and the force and fire of the Holy Spirit turns the Jesus followers, transforms us Christians into messengers of a better world. We all can be rainbows for each other. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus the joy of the Church is made complete. Root the Church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seize team with life, forest reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Guide us to protect our earth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Guide all leaders to make wise decisions during the time of Corona. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Generous God, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, isolated, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need. Especially we pray for Trudy and Martha, Elsa, Karen and her family, Madison's mom and Marina. Let them feel signs of your healing power and your steadfast love. 
Let us feel where we are needed. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Creator God, we thank you for the very small services here in our church. Let us share the gift of praying, learning and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious to others with different gifts. We wait for the time when we can meet in church with fewer restrictions and can meet on visit again. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise all our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.